Today we're going to rebuild the programmer module from this 86 through 89 Corvette C68 HVAC system. It looks like this on the outside and when we remove it it looks like this on the inside. The first step is going to be to remove this aluminum nut from the vacuum stud. We're going to use a 9 30 seconds inch nut driver. We're going to set that aside, press the bolt out and set that aside. This is a quarter inch uh, hex screw. Some boards have one of these, some have two. Our board has two. And we're going to go ahead and remove those. We'll set those aside. We'll pull out the circuit board assembly and set the case aside. This particular unit it looks pretty rough. Some of the uh, factory air filters have started to disintegrate. I don't see any cracks in the vacuum tubing. I don't see any cracks in the vacuum fitting, so we're fine there. The primary failure on these is the blend door drive circuitry. It, that's going to be the circuitry located in this area of the board. So we're going to remove the manifold. We're just going to lift up. And then we're going to set that aside. Good. That gets us access to the circuitry that we need. Uh, another source of failure, this electrolytic capacitor shorts frequently. These power resistors fail. These drive transistors fail. And these silicon diodes fail. The kit that we sell includes all of those parts. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to replace all of those. All right, so the first step is to remove the old parts. We're going to use some of the solder that was provided with the kit, and we're just going to add a little bit of solder, and uh, the solder contains resin. We're going to use our vacuum solder removal tool. We're going to heat that solder and vacuum it away. And we'll do that for all of the solder joints that are holding these resistors in place. We're going to be as careful as, as we can with this circuit board. Um, this this particular this particular vintage board is particularly susceptible to damage from too much heat. So we're going to apply heat for the minimum amount of time possible. When we removed all the solder, the parts will just fall free. We're going to do the same thing with the electrolytic capacitor. We're going to remove the two transistors just below those power resistors. Finally, we're going to we're going to remove these two diodes and we know from experience the quick way to do this is to just cut them free. Okay. We'll take all the old parts and set those aside. We're going to go back and clean out the holes for the diodes. OK. 
Okay. If we have any uh, solder remaining over the holes, we'll just clean that up now. We'll get ready to install the new parts. The first step is to install the new capacitor. We're going to use a lead bending jig. We can bend these with a pair of needle nose pliers. It doesn't really matter. We're going to bend those at the one inch mark, one inch between the leads. And we're going to install the capacitor. If we look at the board, we see a plus marking on the right side. We'll make sure that the crimped end of the capacitor, which is marked positive, goes that direction. We'll put that capacitor in place. And then we will bend the leads apart slightly. And that just holds the capacitor in place while we solder it. To solder the new component in, we're going to heat the junction between the lead of the capacitor and the pad. We're going to feed in a small amount of fresh solder. And we're going to remove the heat. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And then we'll use our side cutters and cut those leads short to prevent them from shorting when we put this back in the case. Next, let's put the transistors in. We can see the old transistor on the left and the new transistor on the right. Um, I've uh, bent the leads of the new transistor using a pair of needle nose pliers so that they look like the, the leads on the uh, old transistor. Essentially, I have uh, bent the leads, the outside leads apart slightly, and I've bent the center lead forward slightly so that they form sort of a triangle pattern. That matches up with the triangle pattern that we see in the board. So we're going to put those transistors in place. And we'll bend the leads apart slightly to hold it in place. Here we see the new transistors in place. So we'll go ahead and solder those. The leads are bent apart slightly to hold those transistors in place while I solder them. And again, we're just going to heat the junction between the pin and the pad, feed in a small amount of fresh solder, and remove the heat. Looks good, so we'll clip those leads short. Ow. And there we see those new transistors soldered in place. Next we'll install the diodes, and if we look at the board, we'll see the diode symbol above these two holes. It shows the cathode, which is the silver band end of the diode, is pointing to the outside of the circuit board so that's the way we'll install ours. We'll install our new diodes and again we see the silver band is pointing toward the outside of the board in both cases. We'll bend those leads apart slightly to hold those diodes in place and then we'll solder them in place. We're going to heat the junction between the pin and the pad, feed in a small amount of solder and then remove the heat. And we'll cut those leads short. Next, we'll install the two power resistors. Uh, we want to make sure that we install these resistors as close to the board as we possibly can. 
I know it looks like they're damaging the circuit board, but they are charring it, but they aren't really damaging it. And then we'll bend those leads apart to hold everything in place. All right, and we'll solder those in place. Just like we soldered the other components. These larger components take a bit more heat, but again, our goal is to get on and off of the circuit board as fast as possible. All right, and we're just gonna make sure that those resistors are flat against the board. I'm pressing the resistor toward the board while I heat up each junction. And that's hot. That ensures that the resistors are sitting flush against the board. The reason for this is we don't want vibration to move the resistors and damage the board over time. And we'll clip those leads short. So this is how it should look when we're done. Show you that from multiple angles. We want to make sure that we don't have any solder bridges, which would be uh, solder between any two between, we don't have any, any solder beads between any two of these solder joints. Uh, and that everything is filled in and looks nice and bright and shiny. If not, just use your vacuum solder removal tool, vacuum the old solder away, and solder it again. Uh, if it uh, looks gray or crystalline, it's a pretty good sign that it's a cold solder joint, and you should definitely, you should definitely uh, remove that solder and, and solder it again. So next we're going to resolder the solenoids. Uh, it's fairly common for these solder joints to turn cold and when they do we lose electrical contact or in this case we also lose uh, mechanical fastening uh, since the, uh, the third solder joint here on the back side is used to um, just to mount the just to mount the solenoid to the circuit board. Um, something that makes this a little bit easier is liquid flux. It's not necessary, but if you have it, it will make this job much easier. This particular programmer only has five solenoids. There is a space for a sixth solenoid. If yours has it, go ahead and solder all six of those. We're also going to put flux on the mounting tabs and reflow those solder joints just to make sure that it's me mechanically mounted to the board. We're going to heat that solder, feed in a very small amount of fresh solder, and remove the heat. And we'll go to the next one. Uh, I'm, I'm leaving the heat on just a bit longer because we are soldering directly to the uh, metal frame of this the solenoid and that uh, that heat sinks away some of the the heat that our soldering iron is providing next we're going to reflow each of the solder joints for the electrical connections of the solenoid there are two of these for each solenoid If you need to know where they are, we'll just turn the board over and look at the electrical connections to each of the solenoids. I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, that's how this should look when we're done. If we look at the solenoid side, we'll see two electrical connections here and here to that coil and we're going to reflow each of those solder joints 
We're going to use uh, some isopropyl alcohol and an old nylon bristle brush in order to uh, clean up the rosin on the circuit board. Uh, it's not really, th this step is not necessary, um, but it does give us the ability to inspect our work a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and get that rosin out of the way. We're going to apply that alcohol liberally. Give it a good brushing everywhere that we worked. It might take two or three attempts before all of the flux comes off of the board. Just to speed things up, we're going to use some compressed air to dry the board. So here's what our work looks like now. Again, we see nice, bright, shiny solder joints. The holes are completely filled in. If we see anything else, now is the time to now is the time to remove that old solder and re-solder it. Next, we'll put the vacuum lines back. We're going to put the vacuum manifold back. If we notice, the vacuum manifold covers all but one of these solenoids. Once we get that lined up, it's, it's hard to see, but once we get that lined up, we'll push the manifold back into place. This is just a press fit. We'll make sure the other lines are secure at both ends. And everything looks good here. So let's go ahead and put this back into the case. We'll reinstall the circuit board assembly back into the case. We'll put this bolt right in the center of the vacuum lines. And we'll hold that while we're putting the nut back. We're going to use a 9 32 inch socket or nut driver to reinstall that nut. That doesn't need to be too tight. The parts kit comes with a washer and a new nut. The intent of this is to replace the, um, the vacuum line keeper if yours happened to get damaged while you were taking the programmer out. Next, we're going to reinstall the screws that hold the circuit board in place. This is a little bit easier if you do it upside down. We're reinstalling those with a quarter inch socket. And there we see the rebuilt programmer. Next, let's go ahead and test this. So the first purpose of the programmer is to drive the blend door motor. We're going to, in order to test that, we're going to, we're going to set auto mode and we're going to choose 60 degree set point. And we should see the blend door motor move toward the cold side, which is up. It's at about 10 o'clock position. Next, we're going to choose full hot. We're going to make sure that blend door motor moves full hot, which should be about the five o'clock position. Okay. That's somewhere between 4.30 and 5 o'clock position. Next, we're going to choose a temperature that's about halfway in between. We should see the blend door motor stop somewhere in between those two, and we do. Okay, so the drive circuitry is working as it should now. The, the second purpose of the programmer is to drive each of these solenoids on and off. I've set my multimeter to DC voltage, and we're just going to check the voltage across each of those solenoids. When the solenoid is on, we should see battery voltage. When the solenoid is off, we should see zero volts. So we see that solenoid number one is not energized. Solen solenoid number two is energized. Solenoid number three is energized. Number four is not. Number five is not. Next, we're going to set full cool. Okay. And we'll retest. 
We see solenoid number one is now energized. Two and three we know can be driven. Number four is not. Number five is not. So next we're going to select full hot and we're just checking to see if solenoids number four it is energized at this point. Solenoid number five is energized at this point. So all five of those solenoids can be turned off and on by selecting various combinations of operating mode or operating temperature from the controller. At this point our programmer is working the way it should. We'll go ahead and reinstall that in the car. We'd like to thank you for watching. If we've helped you, we'd appreciate it if you would check out our web store. That is uh, batty.com. There'd be a link below where you can find the tools and the parts that we've used to do this repair. Thank you very much. Thanks to your support, 10 Americans have jobs.